Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a soul connection reading. And so we're going to really dive into your soul connection with another person. And so uh, this reading can be timeless, which means that you can resonate with it at any time you happen to run across this video. So just always take what resonates you guys and get rid of anything that doesn't. All the decks I'll be using here today, I'll let you guys know what I'm using as I shuffle each deck. Everything will be listed down below and today's Organite is called the Goddess Hecate Organite. So let's get started. Let's see what spirit wants us to understand and know today about our soul connection. What does spirit want us to know and understand today about our soul connection with this person? This is my Twin Flame Journey Oracle. We have solitude. So some of you guys are in separation from your person. There could be a good reason behind it. There could be some sort of learning or ascension that's taking place that maybe would not be experienced if you guys were together. Some of you guys might be going into a little bit of a, you know, solitude. And solitude is not a negative. This is um, can be very, very healthy and positive for all parties involved. So if some of you guys are, you know, feeling kind of solo right now or feeling maybe even a bit lonely, there could be some sort of a reason behind this. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to my Twin Flame Journey Tarot and get some details on this solitude energy. This could be, of course, what your person is going through as well. You know, they're doing their own thing. Mm, interesting, we have Four of Cups. So Four of Cups says missed opportunity. I almost feel like um, if there has been a rejection, so if your individual has missed out on an opportunity to partake in this connection with you and be with you, there's of course, there's a missed opportunity. But the thing is, this is an opportunity perhaps for both people or both parties to spend some time in their own energy, which doesn't have to be a negative. It's an opportunity to see something else actually. So now we have two of wands, planning and decisions. This is good because not in this particular deck, but in traditional Rider Waite tarot, it shows a man who has a globe in his hands and he's looking at this globe and he is, you know, kind of taking a look at what he wants to do with his life. So this card says planning and decisions. What decisions do I want to make? What plans do I want to make for my future? What things do I want to do? So this gives people an opportunity to kind of sit in their own energy and figure out what do they want? What do they want? What do they not want? What do they want to do? What do they not want to do? It gives everybody breathing space and room to figure out who they are and what they want to do moving forward. So if there has been a separation or if there has been a rejection here, it's for a higher purpose is what I'm seeing with that. Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands can be connected to the sign of Sagittarius, but we have passionate adventure. This is beautiful because this shows me actually that somebody has had an opportunity or is having an opportunity now to find themselves. The Knight of Wands, Sagittarians very much are all about being independent, all about exploring and expanding their minds. They're all about traveling and just basically having adventures. That's not all Sagittarians, but that is the depiction of that card. So I feel that either you or your person, or maybe both of you are having an opportunity that maybe was missed between the two of you to now spend some time doing your own thing and finding yourself. So this is not always a bad thing, you guys. So this is something that Spirit wanted you guys to know today about this connection, but also about yourselves, really. So now we're going to go into this affirmation using my divine feminine healing. head space. So basically the thoughts that we are choosing to think really dictate our entire reality. So I'm going to read this. I have the ability to change my mood by the thoughts I am choosing to think. I focus on things that bring me joy, not on things that rob me of my peace. So we can choose to see this as a rejection or we can choose to see this as an opportunity an opportunity to do something that we've always wanted to do, an opportunity to better ourselves, to ascend to a higher level. So it's all in the way that we choose to see the situation. We can see that glass as half empty or half full. It's completely up to us. 
So if you and your person are in a space of physical separation or just choosing to maybe spend some time doing your own thing, this doesn't have to be a negative. It's actually a blessing in disguise. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what are some of those blessings. What are some of those blessings that are basically popping up because of this either physical separation or time apart? Let's take a look. We're going to go into, what is this one called? Spirit of the Animal Deck, I believe is what this one's called. What are some of these blessings that are popping up here? We have the snow leopard, you guys. I love this so much. Oh my God, self-reliance. Do you see this? This is helping you guys through, what does this say? Solitary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's nuts. So let me go ahead and grab, where's, I don't even remember where I just put those cards. Oh, here we, here we go. Solitude. Look at that. You are strongly independent and often solitary. Integrity is important for your best outcome. Cloak yourself with invisibility and walk with the shamans. Use your intuition and let your life unfold in silent perfection. So this time on your own is an opportunity for you to better rely on yourself for your own happiness, for your own well-being. This is about completing yourself, not looking for another person to complete you. So if you and this individual came together and it was, oh my God, it was passionate. Because let me tell you something, that Knight of Wands is very, very passionate. Passionate adventure, adventure of a lifetime. Sweeps you off your freaking feet. Feels like nothing else you've ever experienced before. Leaves you in a dazed headspace where you don't even know what the heck just hit you, right? You don't even know what the heck just, you don't even know what to think. That's powerful energy, right? But it can also be very, very disruptive and it can cause someone to almost rely on that person for that kind of like hit of dopamine that they provide rather than relying on themselves. So it's not to say that you're being punished now with this separation because maybe you got really excited about this individual. Nothing wrong. But sometimes too much of a good thing can be too much of a good thing. Sometimes we lose ourselves in what feels good. So sometimes there needs to be an opportunity for us to see things in a different way. So if you've stepped away or your person stepped away from you, or there's some sort of circumstance that might be creating a challenge or a separation right now, what I'm getting here is don't waste this opportunity being sad. Don't waste this opportunity being in your headspace, feeling sorry for yourself. Don't be in this headspace of doom and gloom. Be in a headspace of it's my time to walk with the shamans. It's time to tap into my intuition and let my life unfold in silent perfection. <laughs> Beautiful. Cloak yourself in this energy. Cloak yourself in the solitude. Embrace it. Because there are amazing things that are happening to you right now, and they wouldn't have happened to you unless you were in this current space right now of time. So it's all in the way that you choose to see the situation, you guys. It can be doom and gloom, or it can be amazing energy. Totally up to us. So I love that, that, I love that opening message. It was very empowering for the viewer. So now, of course, we'll go ahead and take a look and see what is going on with your person. Where is your person at right now, especially when it comes to you and this connection? You know, where are they at? Where is their head space at? Where is their heart space at? Let's take a look. So we're going to go into my Arrows of Love Oracle. Let's see where your person is at in their headspace towards you and this connection. What are they thinking? How do they see you in this connection? Okay, so we have past love. So let's get some tarot on this and see what's going on here. We're going to tap into my Arrows of Love tarot. All right, we have good times, three of hearts, which is three of cups. But this is in the reverse position. 
I feel like right now your person definitely, when they reflect on this connection with you, you guys definitely had some good times, right? But that energy might be passed for them as in they're not really focusing too heavily on this. There could be other energy that they're plugged into besides you. And that's not to be harsh, but that might just be that they're not super hyper-focused on you. So why should you be super hyper-focused on them if you are? Don't forget to have your own good times. I'm getting here that your person could also be overindulging in drinking, partying, also connecting with people that are not for their highest good, but they're connecting with them anyways. So your person could be wasting a lot of time right now. They could just be really drowning themselves. There's something going on. So they might not be in the best headspace to be with you or to show up for you in a positive way. So that's why Spirit's asking you to take a look at this separation that is happening right now, if that's your story, and see it as a blessing in disguise. Because I'm getting here that your person may not be best suited for you at this time. I have a page of cups, which could be a Pisces, some of you guys, or maybe you're a Pisces, but we have a youth. This is somebody who has a lot of growing to do. This is someone who may not be serious at this time. They may also have a lot of issues in their past that make up their current language of love. And if their current language of love is just all over the place, or they want to keep their options open, or they don't want to settle down or commit not like you have to do that in order to be healthy but i'm just seeing here with the three of cups in the reverse position to me this is someone who's just not in the highest vibration flirtatious it shows that someone is perhaps just in it just for the moment it's touch and go they can't really offer anybody anything solid it's just crumbs here and there so it may be that you guys came together at one time and you had this connection, but as far as currently where they're at, they might still be in this state of growth and this state of still maturing and trying to learn who they are. And that might be very difficult to connect with someone or try to work something out with an individual that is kind of flip floppity all over the place maybe even connecting to you, but also other people. If you don't want that, that might not be something that you want to continue to involve yourself in. Yeah, this person needs to still find themselves. They have some mountains to, to uh, climb here. They've got to dedicate themselves to their own growth and their own healing. They're seeking something. Seeker of Keys is the Knight of Pentacles. And Knight of Pentacles, you guys, is pretty slow moving energy. It doesn't mean this person will never find themselves. It doesn't mean that they can't but they would really have to dedicate their time and energy to being serious and, and, and getting committed to themselves in order to be able to commit to you. So if you're looking for a dedicated, solid person, I'm just getting here that when they look at you in this connection, I'm getting here that they're not able to show up for you in a dedicated way that they need to because they've got something else that's taking away or just from this connection or distracting them in their environment and they're allowing it to happen. So until they pull themselves out of that relation, either relationship with another person, because it could be third party or just this flirtatious, keeping my options open, partying too hard energy your person is not going to be able to dedicate themselves to you. And they might know that they're not ready as well, because this is also showing me that this person may know that they're not ready. And this person could have been, have told you before that they have commitment issues or that they don't want marriage or they don't want a traditional relationship. This person could have actually told you this. And sometimes we only hear what we want to hear. Or sometimes we actually say to ourselves, that doesn't apply to me. I'm the exception. You know, sometimes we want to save people. So I'm just getting here that your person, as we know, cannot be saved. You can't do the work for them. They're going to have to show, they're going to have to climb their own mountain. You guys, you can't help them up that mountain. They're going to have to do it on their own. So they're either going to do it or they're not going to do it. And that's why right now, if you're wasting time waiting for this person, 
you're just depleting your own vibration because right now you're meant to thrive. You're meant to be in this beautiful energy of the snow leopard. You see that? You're meant to rely on your own self for your happiness, not this individual. And it doesn't mean it could never be, but this is a lesson in self care. And this person is the perfect teacher for you because they can't show up for you. So of course you're probably triggered to want to try harder. You're probably triggered to want to sell yourself short just to be with this person. So they are the perfect person to teach you this lesson in self-reliance, self-love and self-care. You see how it all works out? So we don't have to see this person as the enemy. We can see this person as someone who is teaching us a very valuable lesson. So let's go ahead and go into their emotions towards you. How do they feel? Okay. How do they feel towards you? Okay. So we have the real deal. All right. Let's see what this is about. Look, the four of cups coming up in the reversed. So we already had the four of cups, cups come up in the upright position. So four of cups makes an appearance twice in this reading. We have the keeper of arrows. I'm sorry. Yeah, keeper of arrows, which is the knight of, I'm sorry, knight. No, queen of um, swords. The fact that it's reversed, I'm like having a hard time even reading this. The uh, queen of swords. And last one, we have the star. Okay. Star can be connected to the sign of Aquarius. And also the queen of swords can be Libra. So we've got some air here. Okay. Your person, you guys, sees you as someone who is definitely the real deal. You are very, very authentic. You say what you mean. You're not screwing around, okay? Now, you may not be, I mean, no one's perfect. So you may not be perfect. You definitely have your faults, of course. But this person does see you as somebody who's pretty solid. They see you as somebody who has integrity. They see you as somebody who is a shining star. So you shine above all the rest. There's something significant about you for sure to this individual. But the four of cups is someone who's still failing to see something. They're still failing to get the lesson. There's still something going on within them that's still unfulfilled. So even though you might check all of their boxes, they still feel empty and they might be looking for someone else to fulfill them. I certainly see this here. Three of cups. We can only do, we can only do as many drugs get together with so many people or drink enough alcohol to try to numb that empty feeling. At some point, we're going to have to face the music. Why are we so empty? Why am I feeling so broken? Why am I so bored? Why am I so unfulfilled? Can't be everyone else. So to me, this is a part of your person's growth. And this is a part of the work that is ahead of them right now. That's what I'm seeing here. So you're also connected to them when it comes to this soul lesson. So not only are they teaching you something, you're also teaching them something. And I'm going to tell you how you're going to teach this person something is because you're not going to take that. You're not going to take that. The queen of swords in the reverse position cuts someone out cut someone out of their life. They don't put up with this. And it doesn't mean that you have to be mean to this person. It doesn't mean that you have to kill this person with your words. I don't mean that literally, but just like your sharp tongue, even though for some of you, you may have gotten to that point. It just means that you stay strong, that you don't go back and forth with this individual, that you don't allow this individual in and out of your life. That is the only way that things are going to renew that's the only chance that this connection has. It's the only chance that this person has of changing is by you not, not submitting 
to this back and forth energy because that's what the Knight of Wands is, somebody who's back and forth in and out of your lives. When we allow somebody to do that, we're teaching somebody how to treat us, which is you can come back and forth anytime you please. And some of us may have been taught that because this is our twin flame, our soulmate, that we got to put up with it because that's their, you know, they're our counterpart. Not true. I don't care what the labels are, you guys. Nobody has the right to come in and out of our lives unless we're allowing that to happen. So people will only treat you as good or bad as you allow them to. So I'm seeing here that your person in their heart space knows that you're the real deal. They know that you're true. They know that they should probably, let's just say, be with you. But there's something in them that's still lacking. And because of their lack, because of their feelings of boredom and just disappointment in life, but really it's within themselves until they get it, until they fulfill their own cup until they see something, until they see the light, until they ascend, until they heal. And I'm getting here, you're a part of that lesson for them. Your dramatic departure in their life or cutting them out as in no communication. This, I feel with this reading, is the only way that your person is really going to be able to see the freaking light. Now, that doesn't guarantee you guys that if you do that, that this person will change. Because everybody has the free will to see the light or not. But what I'm getting here is that continu continuing to be in this, either for some of you third party situation, or some of you this settling for crumbs crap, page of cups. Some of you guys just kind of dealing with this in and out energy. Somebody's hot, somebody's then they're not. Cold, hot, you know, all that. Whatever this is, I'm getting here that there needs to be a stop to it. And the Queen of Swords in the reverse position is one of the only people I know in the tarot deck that can do that. And that's you. And your person knows this. Some of you guys may have already done this. You're the one person in their life, like a thorn in their side, that would not allow them to play games with them or play games with you and come back in, in and out of their lives. Or, I'm sorry, I meant that for you. It's the only way that this person may even see the light is by knowing that they can't get away with that crap with you. I don't know why, you guys, but that is the message and that is what your person feels in their heart space. They, at the end of the day, know that they can't do this to you. So either this is something that you've already done, this is something you're doing now, or it's something you will do. But this is the only hope of renewal or restoration of this connection is when the cycle ends and it ends with you, whoever you are watching the video. Whoa. So now let's go ahead and get some messages from your person's higher self to you. We're going to go into my divine masculine revelations. Higher self messages to you. And we're going to go ahead and combine that with my connections for the modern world. Masculine side. Whew. So some of you guys, maybe a feminine watching this video, your masculine is telling you here, I am a better person because of you. <laughs> this, this queen of swords... See that? I'm a better person because you're doing this or because you've done this or that you will do this. Because you are strong. Because you will not allow me to engage in unhealthy behavior with myself or you. I'm actually becoming a better person because of you. I'm stronger because of you. Because you're strong. Because you're tapping into your masculine side because you're nice and balanced within your masculine and feminine side. And when I need you to, you know, break out that masculine side of yourself, you're doing that and you're teaching me a damn good lesson. That's what that's saying. All right, let's get another. And 
And we have suspended. You've been in my dreams. So while we are suspended, while this connection seems to be suspended in time, and it's funny because I'm getting for a lot of you that you have suspended. You have put your masculine on suspension. <laughs> I'm just getting that. You put your masculine on suspension. And because of this, you're subcon like he subconsciously, and I say he, it could be she too, but they're subconsciously connected to you in your dream world. So they're coming through your dreams. You're coming through their dreams. You guys are communicating in the astral plane. There could be some telepathic communication going on too. So while this connection is suspended in time or just suspended, you are coming through their dreams. Okay. That's what they're telling you here. And we have take a shot. Woo, that's pretty cool. All right, so this person is saying, my heart, it's just telling me to do it. Just take a shot, take a risk, just do it. It's a shot in the dark, you guys. Okay, so if some of you guys have not heard from this person in a long time, I feel like it's definitely a shot in the dark, but their heart, because you're actually communicating with them through their dreams, is actually telling them to just do something, to apologize, to reach out, to communicate with you. That's what I'm getting from that. And we have, oh, that's the, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing, you guys, that's the Queen of Swords. <laughs> the queen of swords reversed. Ooh. I can still feel you. <laughs> okay. Not only does your person feel your feminine side, but they also still feel this energy from you. You have made a lasting impression on this individual. This, I mean, look at how powerful she is. She looks freaking serious. Like she's sharp. She's not going to, she's not going to mess around. They, they respect or will respect. Okay. This energy. And that's not to suggest to everyone, you know, be a bitch, do this, do that. And all of a sudden you'll get your person back. It's not about playing games. It's not about any of that energy. This is about integrity. This is about boundaries, healthy boundaries, this is about stepping into your power. And when you step into your power, other people are either going to level up with you and respect you, or they are going to fall away from your life for good. Either way, you are going to be in a happier position in life because you're not going to be settling for crap that's just not serving you. So this person can still feel these lasting effects of your energy of you putting your foot down, but they respect this because if you weren't this energy to them, they would not be able to learn anything. They wouldn't be able to change. They wouldn't be able to respect you. So as long as you're in this energy of going back and forth, taking them back, you know, this entire connection being on their terms, you're never going to get the respect that you ultimately deserve with this individual. The only way that you're going to get respect is if you take your power back and you do things based out of that own empowerment. So you're the keeper of this situation, not them, not the other way around. You're keeping score, you know, you're taking a look and seeing which way the arrows are going. They're not coming at you anymore. And it's not saying they're going towards your person, but you're not taking it anymore. So if that means that some of you got to jump into this energy in order to just survive or in order to just shift gears for a little bit, then that's what you need to do. And I'm telling you, your person from their higher self is telling you that's what they need. That's what's happening here. All right, you guys. So we're going to go ahead and end this reading um, at this time just with some messages from your uh, spirit team. What does your spirit team want to let you know? What spirit um, guides or animals, things like that are with you at this time and why? We're going to go into my Spirits of Darkness and Light Divination deck. Okay, so we have Spirit of Fire. Look at this. Fiery energy, spark, passion, creativity. So this is all about what 
keeps you feeling good? What keeps you feeling passionate and alive? What feeds you? What feeds your soul? What makes you feel truly alive? That's what spirit is asking you to connect to. Connect back to your fire. Connect back to what makes you truly feel alive. And we have spirit of the key. That's an eagle. Solution, wisdom, and spiritual knowledge. Guess what? That key is literally being dropped from, let's just say, above, which would be spiritual guidance, spiritual knowledge, wisdom, downloads coming to you through your dreams, through meditation, just coming to you in thoughts, vibrations. It's solutions to your challenges. It's the way forward. It's growth. It's development. It's ascension. Healing. These are all being offered to you. So not only do we have earth animals, so animals that are on you know feet, we also have animals in the sky. Look for these signs, you guys. Fire and keys, eagles, deers, lightning even. We have spirit of the book. So this is telling me here that there could also be information coming to you in the form of a book, spiritual guidance. You're being spiritually guided to pick up a particular book or open up a new chapter in your story. Okay. Whatever business is unfinished with this individual, don't be afraid to move forward. Some people are afraid to move forward because they feel like if they move forward, then they're going to lose this connection forever. Well, the thing is, if it's not meant to be forever, then what difference does it make? We can't control things. We can't control other people. All we can do is control ourselves. All we can do is continue to develop our skills and to ascend and to, you know, become more enlightened as each day goes by. So as you continue to develop your skills, as you continue to open up new chapters in your life, Anything that's unresolved is naturally going to conclude, whether it be by someone returning from the past, whether it be by a relationship that mirrors that, that trauma or mirrors that energy that you didn't get to finish before. Things have a way of evolving, whether we try to control it or not. So just try to just be more open on this journey is what spirit's saying. Try to be more open, like a book. Crack open that book and be open to the opportunities that come. Be open to other things on your journey besides just this one person or this one feeling that you have right now. Try to remain open to develop and to grow and ascend, okay? So let's go into the earth and sky oracle here that I created. I just saw the, the, um, the card new moon. I feel like some of you guys with this new moon in cancer that just passed us and the reading that I had done last week on the new moon in cancer, it may have brought up a lot of nostalgia from the past. You guys, a lot, a lot of unfinished stuff with old people, but it's telling you here. So spirits guidance to you is to continue to move forward and open up new chapters. Try not to get hung up on old stories. Okay. There will be opportunities perhaps for unfinished or unresolved things to basically either develop in new ways later or to resolve themselves, but try not to wait for that resolution. Continue to move forward. You will see the magic along your journey with how it all comes together. We have autumn. Look at that. Time of letting go, making preparations, shadow work, and giving thanks. This is beautiful because even though it might not, I mean, it could be, I don't think it's autumn somewhere. I think it would be summer slash winter somewhere. So the next season might be autumn for some people or not. It doesn't matter. Let's, let's get away from the actual timeline. What autumn represents is a time of letting go. It's a time of making preparations for the future. I'm sorry, for the winter. It's also a time for shadow work and also giving thanks for things. And sometimes giving thanks to people that may have done us dirty, did us wrong. Forgiving those people, seeing it from a different perspective. Remember you guys, 
whatever headspace we're in is what we're going to see in the world. So if we see the world as a dark place, if we see every single person in our lives as an enemy, somebody who's taking, somebody who is hurting us, then that will be our experience. Or we can see these people as our teachers, blessings in disguise and give thanks instead and face our fears and make preparations for a better future. Those are all things that we can do, but we can't do that by holding on to all of this. We have to let it go. We can't be afraid to open up a new chapter. The only way forward is to move into the new. That's it. That's it. We have lion, baby. Hoo-hoo, Leo, fire. Brave and admirable, generous and affectionate, and commanding and self-centered. So check this out, you guys. We're going into Leo season because right now we're in Cancer still. But on the 23rd, we enter officially into Leo season. This tells me that moving forward, you are going to be very brave. You're going to be very admirable for your bravery. That Queen of Swords energy is going to be admired. Mm-hmm you're commanding respect. And if that means that you're taking care of yourself and if somebody else or other people feel threatened by that or feel that you're self-centered, I'm getting what other people think about you is none of your business. That's a book. This is about you stepping into your power and roaring like the lion, the lion that you are. Last message. And we've got the dog love it loyal and trustworthy reliable and dependable friendly and fun could be anxious and irritable so this is the thing you guys i do feel that what spirit's trying to tell you here is that you will start to draw once you step into your power you will start to draw in people of your same vibration so if you are somebody that is full of integrity loyalty and you're trustworthy you're reliable and dependable that's the queen of swords all day long you are going to draw to you like-minded individuals, people of your same vibration. So once you shift that anxious or irritable energy and you start to just have more fun on this journey, instead of being maybe miserable or just unhappy, you're going to see how things shift. So once you shift your thoughts, you shift your life. That's it. That's it. So anyways, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this reading and I hope that it resonated with you. Thank you so much for watching and you guys take care. Bye-bye.